Okay, editing Johnny here. I just want to make a quick point about a lot of things we talk about in this video. Uh, it's not ESO's fault, so I don't want anyone to, you know, think that this is an uh, unoptimized game <clears throat> and the performance issues are, you know, Zenimax's fault. Uh, we all, well, all, you know, highly uh, aware that, you know, it's it's our PCs and our internets that have issues. So I don't want anyone to kind of blame Zos for this kind of stuff, all right? Um, anyway, back to the video. Okay, boys and girls, today we're going to talk all things FPS and performance in ESO. Now, this is basically the ultimate guide. As far as I know, this I've done everything. I've looked at every video and article and kind of put everything together and everything that's worked for me. There's a lot of stuff that I've tried and hasn't really done much. So this is all the stuff that I've done to improve my FPS and more importantly, improve my lag and latency. So before you click off and think you've seen and this stuff from Outcast or whatever, there's a lot of stuff in here that he didn't cover in his video. Some of it is going to be similar to other things you've seen, but as I said, this is kind of uh, an ultimate guide of everything. So first of all, a few things that you probably have seen. Uh, if you right click and go to NVIDIA control panel, uh, open it up and power management mode, prefer maximum performance. A lot of these things aren't going to make a big difference, um, but when you combine them all together, uh, they're going to make a difference. So next you want to go to display settings and go down here to graphic settings and here variable refresh rate. You want to turn this on. Um, and then next off you want to go to task manager, go to startup add on uh, startup programs here and disable just about everything that you really don't need. Um, a lot of this stuff, if you want to use it, you're going to open the program anyway. So, you know, Microsoft Edge, no one uses it, disable it. Uh, my editing program, disable it. I don't need that. Stream, uh, Steam, if I want to open Steam, I'll, I'll open it. Um, just go through there and disable all that stuff. Something else too is uh, hyper-threading. So if you have an i7 or a newer i5 or whatever, um, AMD's got an equivalent thing to it, but ESO actually likes hyper-threading turned off. I wouldn't recommend doing this, though, if you play a lot of different games, but if you basically just play ESO, um, or you play, like, other light, not demanding games, then disabling hyper-threading can be an option. I won't talk about it, because it's a bit hard to film going into the virus and stuff like that, but there's uh, thousands of videos on YouTube showing you how to do it. Um, when I tried it, it gave me anywhere between 5 to 15% FPS. Uh, so not a big difference, but if you are trying to, you know, grab every little bit you can, it's something to try, and you can always go turn hyper-threading back on if, if it uh, doesn't work out for you. So now we're going to get into some more ESO-specific things. So what you're going to want to do is go to Documents, go to Elder Scrolls Live, uh, Elder Scrolls and then go to live. Now, there's a few things in here. Shader cache is something that you want to kind of delete on a regular basis. It can get quite large and this can cause issues. So deleting this every now and then, like mine's about 14,000 kilobytes. So 14 megabytes is about what it is normally. Um, but anyway, so user settings. All right, so there's a lot in here that we need to change. Um, and I have it kind of all over here. I'm going to post these all in the description so you can go through and change all this stuff to um, what I have stated here. So a couple of things I will talk about though, if we go down to the bottom here, uh, a lot of people ask about FPS cap. So to get rid of the FPS cap, you're going to want to look for skip, uh, sorry, set min, frames time uh let's just find that real quick i thought i'd already scrolled down set min uh anyway while we're here skip program videos set that to one that will get rid of the startup video for you and then we should be just here somewhere there we are set min frame times i will have both the numbers in the uh, description this is for 1440p uh 144 hertz uh or hertz, either way you look at it. And then I'll have the numbers to change this if you just want to go balls out and go 300 FPS cap. Um, 
but yeah, I'll have these in the description so you can kind of go through and change it. Uh, a lot of this stuff was on, or well, half of this stuff was on our cast website, and some of the values are different, and there's a lot that I've added in there that I've changed also. Um, talking about that, if there's a, if you guys want to see a video on how to kind of do the opposite of this and make the game just look as good as it possibly can without, um, without, uh, without caring about FPS, obviously, then leave a comment in the description and I might make a video on about how to uh, murder your FPS but make the game look really good. So we'll move on to um, what I've done latency-wise. Now, I will open up here in a second and I will show you in-game uh, the settings that I have in-game as well. Uh, so let's just do that real quick. Uh, it's me again. Uh, something I did forget to mention in this video, repairing the game files in the launcher can also help a lot with uh, issues and stuff. And it's something that <clears throat> I'd recommend doing every, you know, few days and stuff like that. So something else to keep in mind. All right. Okay, so my in-game settings here, um, you might notice that some of these have got changed when you went in and edited it. But I turn all this stuff off here, bloom, detortion, sunlight, uh, light rays, uh, show additional effects. Depth of field I have off, grass I have on low. You can make this off as well, it will help. Uh, ambient occlusion I have off as well. Um, view distance is a real killer, so I have this set to zero. And I have uh, my maximum particle suspension distance is all down low. Shadow quality is off. Uh, screen space reflection quality is off and the other reflection quality is off as well and then I'm at uh, high on here and then sub sampling is high uh, anti-aliasing anti is off uh, well none and that's basically my settings um, I do play at 1440p ultra wide so but as you can see the game still looks pretty decent um so yeah i hope this has helped those like you know it, it just depends how much you know you want the game to look better or if you want that extra fps and for pvp extra fps is better than the game looking slightly better so they're the they're the text edit settings i use and the in-game settings i use uh we'll move on to you know talk about the more important things latency and ping well, latency and ping's the same thing, but you know what I mean. All right, guys, let's... Real quick, guys, I know I said I'd leave a lot of this stuff in the description, but YouTube's being really funny about having brackets and stuff in the description, and without having to go through and change everything that I've already typed out and wrote, uh, I'm just going to put it in a text channel in our Discord, so the Discord link will be in the description. Sorry about that, guys, but not much I can do. Okay, let's talk about latency, and this is uh, something I changed today, and it made a huge difference on my consistency with my ping. I went from my ping fluctuating between, like, uh, through, through exalag from, like, 180 to, like, 220, 230, 240, and I was getting lag spikes all the time. It, it was a graph that just went like this. After I made these changes today, my, my ping was flat as fuck. The line was so smooth. Um, I showed it on stream, and yeah, it was a massive difference. So I'm going to uh, talk you guys through this. The first thing you're going to want to do is go down to the search bar down here and type in register, your editor. Uh, normally just IEG will do it. Here we are. Right-click on that and run as administrator. Once you've done that, you'll get this screen right here. I'll have the pathing for where you need to go linked in the description as well. So if you struggle to find where I'm going, you can go down there and find exactly where we're going and stuff like that. So the first thing you want to do is go to local machine and go to software. So, and then you're going to want to scroll down to Microsoft, which is here. You can already see these are open because I've been through here and done this. <clears throat> and then you're going to want to find Windows NT. Um, Windows NT. Where are we? Uh, here it is right here. And you're going to want to open that up and go to current version. Now, 
in here you are going to have um, hang on, let me just go out so so current version and then you're gonna want to open that up as well sorry and find multimedia so scroll down until you find the multimedia here it is here and then go to system profiles and open up system profiles what you'll get is here you'll get a thing that says network throttling and what you want to do is open up that and modify it what you want to put in here is eight F's um, I'll have this all written in the description but eight F's make sure it's hexadecimal and click OK once you've done that you want to get out of all of this go back and you're going to want to go I'm just trying to follow my notes as we go here guys because I obviously do not know this stuff off the top of my head um, so you're going to want to go to system next so drop down system current control settings which is right here and then services and then uh, scroll down to you find TCPIP and it will be all the way down here uh, I just seen it where are we T there we are TCPIP click on that one go to parameters and then interfaces and you'll have three folders here the one that you want to open is the smallest one, the one with the least amount of things in it. So that one's got one in it, the top one's got five or six, the bottom one has got a heap of stuff in here. So once you're in here, you won't have this TCP pack frequencies and this TCP no delay. Those two won't be there, so what you will need to do is add them. Doing that requires you to click right click, new, and you want to go to DWORD 32 bit value. Once you do that, you'll get a new thing. You need to rename one TCP pack, oh, TC pack frequency, exactly how it's written in the description, guys. Very important that you write the exact thing that's written in the description. Um, but it's TCP, all capitals, ACK, and then capital F and frequency. But I'll have this all in the description so you guys can uh, just basically copy and paste it. Um, and then you want to make a second one and write TCP no delay and once you have those two in here I'll just delete the one I made you want to go to modify and set it to one and the same for the other one modify set to one all right let's back out of this um, and then the next thing we're going to want to do is once I minimize these bad boys is we want to go to a local machine again and go to software and you want to go down to you find hang on, software so you want to go software Microsoft um, software and then we want to find our Microsoft tab where are you why do they always seem to hide on me there we are Microsoft now you may not have this folder in here so what you'll need to do is um, go to the Microsoft tab and just right click new key and then you want to type this in exactly as we have it in uh, the description uh, MSMQ capital letters and add that once you've done that you want to go down to the MSMQ uh, folder that you just created and you'll want to add in a new D word 30 bit value um, and then set it to one like we did just earlier and then if you don't have this as well you'll need to click on MSMQ and create new key and put in parameters once you've done that you want to click on the parameters folder and add in new 30 bit uh, D word 32 bit value and add in TCP no delay set it to one like we did uh, before as well um, 
And that's it, guys. That's all you need to do. As I said, I'll leave this all in the description, what you need to write and the pathing for it so you can follow it a lot easier than what I just did. I also will have a video to the tutorial I watched to teach me to do this. So between those two assets, you should be able to get this done pretty easily. Um, and this made a big difference today. I, I'm not saying it's going to work for everyone because I don't want to make that promise, but it definitely made a big difference for me. Okay guys, exit lag uh, is a GPN, a bit like a VPN, but uh, designed more around game connections. VPNs can sometimes make your internet connection or your, your game connection worse. Um, most Aussies use exit lag. We find it to be the best. What the fast used to be pretty good, but uh, we're getting better, better ping with exit lag. There's a lot out there, guys. Most of them give a free trial, so try them out. Uh, try out different servers too because what you may think's the best isn't always going to be the best. Most Aussies, I think me and Kiddens and a lot of other guys are using Los Angeles. Um, you would think Dallas because the tech server's not far from Dallas would be the best server, but it's not for us or for me anyway. Uh, one day when you've got some spare time, sit down and try and test out as many servers as you can and just play for like 10-15 minutes. Um, and see how you go because you know one connection might be a little bit higher but you have a lot more stable ping so anyway I'll leave a link in the description for my affiliate uh, link for exit lag um, so if you sign up and use that I get a whole dollar woo I'll be rich um, anyway uh, well guys that is just about everything at the moment uh, I will quickly mention overclocking CPU overclocking and uh, graphics card overclocking. It has got a lot, lot easier and a lot less whiskey than what it was years ago. Um, and depending on what hardware you have, you know, you could be, you know, losing, well, not losing, but you could gain anywhere between a couple percent to like 10 to 15 percent performance. So there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube uh, how to overclock uh, graphics cards and CPUs and all that kind of stuff. So that is something potentially to have a think about, um, especially if, you know, your computer just needs that little bit of extra, you know, headroom uh, overclocking can be a good option for you. So all that being said, leave in the comments if this has helped, uh, what kind of difference it made. Uh, but for me, it's, it's made a massive difference uh, FPS-wise and also ping uh, latency difference. So... Uh, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Don't forget, I stream almost every day. I'll leave my Twitch linked in the description as well. And I'll catch you in the next one.